Welcome to the intriguing world of default gateways, the pivotal junctions in the network communication landscape. Envision your home router, not just as a device, but as a digital navigator, directing each online action you take, from sending an email to streaming media, through the complex web of the internet. This gateway acts as your primary conduit to the digital universe, deftly handling the traffic between your local network and the vast expanse of the global internet. In broader networks, like those in corporate or academic settings, the role of the default gateway expands. Here it's a traffic conductor, ensuring smooth internet data flow and secure access to external resources. Consider smart home devices, all reliant on this gateway to reach out to the world for updates and synchronization. Even in a bustling cafe's Wi-Fi network, the default gateway is what allows your device to step into the online world amidst a sea of digital requests. Diving into the default gateway's realm is more than a technical foray. It's an exploration of the invisible yet critical force that binds the digital experiences. It's a journey through the heart of network communication, revealing the essential role these gateways play in keeping our world connected and efficient. Let's delve into the essential aspect of networking, a cornerstone that keeps our digital lives running seamlessly. And before commencing, just a quick info for you. If you're an aspiring cybersecurity professional looking for online training and certifications from prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts to enhance your credibility, then search no more. Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity from MIT University in collaboration with EC Council should be your right choice. Through this course, you will gain knowledge and work-ready expertise in skills like advanced hacking concepts, network packet analysis, ethical hacking, network security, and over a dozen others. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then check out the link in the pinned comment and description box below. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's start with the simple definition of default gateway. So a default gateway in networking is analogous to a doorkeeper or guide in a vast complex of buildings. It serves as the primary access point that a device in a network uses to interact with devices in other networks. So if we talk about the technical definition, it's a node, often a router or a network switch in a computer network that serves as an access point or routing hub towards data to destinations outside the local network. So as in the diagram, you can see the definition has been depicted here. Now you'll see the role in network communication. That is the role of default gateway in network communication. So starting with the first role, that is primary function. The default gateway acts as an intermediary that routes the traffic from a local network to devices in another network. When a computer sends data to a device outside its local network, it sends the data to the default gateway first. And then comes the next role, that is network traffic management. It examines the destination's IP address of the data and decides if the destination is within the local network or outside it. If outside, the gateway forwards the data to the external network. And then comes the next role that is routing and connectivity. In most home and office networks, the default gateway is responsible for connecting the internal network to the wider internet. Without a default gateway, computers in a local network can communicate with each other but cannot access outside networks. Now coming to the next role that is dynamic host configuration protocol. So the default gateway addresses is often assigned automatically to individual devices in the network by DHCP, which also assigns IP addresses to these devices. And then comes the internet protocol addressing. So the default gateway has its, repeat, so the default gateway has its own unique IP address, which is configured in the network settings of each device in the network. This address is used to direct outgoing traffic and receive incoming traffic from outside the network. So these are the roles of default gateway in network communication. And if we hear an analogy for better understanding, so think of the default gateway as a post office in a town. If you want to send a letter that is data packet to someone in another town, that would be the external network. You send it via the post office that will act as a default gateway here. So the post office knows how to route your letter to reach the correct destination. And you've seen the roles of default gateway in network communication. So let's see the importance in network communication that is efficiency and order. By having a designated route for external traffic, the default gateway ensures efficient and orderly communication between networks. And the next is network segmentation and security. It can also act as a point of control and security, managing and monitoring the data entering and leaving the network. So this was about the role and the advantages of default gateway in network communication. Now moving to how default gateway works. So let's see a scenario. So we'll set up a home network here and we will have one router and one device that we'll name as computer A 
and the external server. So here the computer A will act as a user's personal computer and the router that will act as the default gateway and the external server, it's a web server on the internet. So now we'll assign the IP address for the computer A and the local IP, public IP and subnet mask for the default gateway and the IP address for the external server. So let's start the communication process between these devices. So if the computer A sends data to external server, so computer A wants to send data to the external server that has the IP address 93.184.216.34. So computer A checks if the destination IP is within its local network using its IP that is 192.168.1.10 and it has a subnet mask as you can see 255.255.255.0. So the local network ranges from 192.168.1.0 to 192.168.1.255. Since 93.184.216.34 is outside its range, that is the external server. So computer A sends the data to the default gateway. So the, that is the router. So the router handles the data here. That is the default gateway. So the router receives the data from computer A. It uses network address translation NAT to translate the private IP address of computer A to its public IP that is 203.0.113.5 and forwards the data to the internet. So the router keeps a NAT table entry to track this specific data flow. So it knows where to send the response back. So data travels to the internet and the data packet travels through various networks and routers in the internet to reach the external server that is 93.184.216.34 so external server responding we'll see here so external server processes the request and sends a response back so the response is directed to the public IP of the router here that is 203.0.113.5 so the router receives and forwards response so the router will receive the response and uses its NAT table to find the corresponding private IP of computer A. It then forwards the response to computer A within the local network. And here computer A receives the response and computer A receives the response from the router and completes the communication process. So this is the working of default gateway in a home network. And with this we have come to the end of this video. If you have any questions related to this video please ask in the comment section below and a team of experts will be happy to help you as soon as possible. Until then, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.